Welcome to the SAS video tutorial of working with text in SAS part one. We're going to use the mifish.csv data set, which you can find in the repository that's linked in the description below. And what I've done is I've already read this into SAS and I have it in the work directory with the name mifish. So what I want to do is start playing with the text and just learning some basic techniques to actually do things with text and deal with the text because text can often be problematic. They're not as nice as numbers to play with because numbers have nice mathematical operations on them. Text is not so nice, or at least I don't think so. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is create a new data set. So I'm gonna call this MIFish1. And the nice set that I'm gonna read this from is MIFish. And I'm going to put run on here, just might as well close everything off so that everything will work fine. So the first thing I want to do is I want to see if I can make a variable. And I'm going to call this bass1. And what I'm going to use is this find function. So in here, well, we'll look at the data set here in just a second. Uh, I'm going to find species and I'm looking for the word bass. Okay, so I'm gonna look for the word bass in species, but let's look at the data set here. So our data set has species and location. And if you notice here real quick that the species has bass in some of them, but it's not the first word. Um, so that's one of the things. And we also have location, which is a string as well. So these are both character variables. Uh, so what we're gonna do here is just see what this gives us, just doing this simple thing here. And I run this and I look at my data set and notice that this returns zero everywhere. Now what find does is it tells you where the first letter of that word shows up in the particular string. And as you can see, I have a small SM bass here. So this would be a small mouth bass, but it gave it a zero, which means it doesn't see that word. And this is why text is difficult sometimes is because it's case sensitive. So what I'm really going to do now is I'm going to change this up a little bit. Instead of looking at bass, I'm going to first create bass one again, and I'll change my other bass. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what's called low case. And what this will do is lower case species for me. That way, when I go to the next statement, I'm going to make this bass two. And here I will now look at bass one, the thing I've made lowercase. So bass one is going to make it lowercase and find is going to look for the word bass in here. So let me run this and see how it's changed my data set. Okay. So we open up the data set and we look and see we have species, we have location and we have bass. And then we have bass two here, which now has numbers in it, right? If I look at this, this three corresponds to S M B. B is the third letter in the word SM bass. So it's already found that in there and it's telling me where that word begins in the string. Now I can use this for lots of things, but the key here is, is notice that I had to make it lowercase so that things matched. Otherwise I could have had to go back and say, well, let me try to figure out what the case should be and hope that it's consistently that case all the way through the data. And this data set has over a thousand rows, so it may not be consistently a capital B. So that's why I'm highly suggesting that you use something like low case. Uh, we could also have done this using uh, something called up case. So I'm going to make this bass three and I could up case this as well. So I'm going to up case the species and then I'll make bass four. I'm going to do find again. I'm going to do bass. Now it's going to be three because that's the one I'm working with. And I'm going to use the word capital B-A-S-S -S because I've turned it into uppercase. And now if I run this, you will see what happens. Um, notice that now I have more columns here because I keep adding things on. So low case made us a lowercase word. Uppercase makes it an uppercase word. But notice it does exactly the same thing. So there's two ways to do this and, and deal with this text. It doesn't matter whether you upcase it or lowercase it. The point is, is if you've got a string that you're looking for in there, you probably have to worry about case unless you're absolutely sure that it's one way or the other. And typically I just tell people always do this transformation because it will make things nicer. Okay. Another thing that we can do here is we could do, uh, I'm going to call this loc one because we have location. And if you notice real quick, let's go back to the data set. 
Now, in our location, we have SC1, and I'll scroll down through here. We have SC2, SC3, AL1, AL2, HI1, HI2, and so on. So these first two letters seem to be giving us a location in like a broader sense, and the number is going to be a little more focused region. So what I would like to do is just peel off this too. I don't really want it there. I just want to be able to see if I'm at HI or SC or, or where I'm actually at in the data set. So there's another function that I can use for this, and it's the substr function. And what this will do is I can take a location and I can tell it where to start. So if I come back in my data set again, I keep opening it up. Um, I want to start at the first character and end at the second character. So it gives me just SC. So let's see if we can do that here. So SC uh, is what I'm, uh, no, this has got to give the positions one and two. So this is the start position and stop position. So for this one, uh, you could put in here, substring requires the, the, whatever our string, our character, is, our text variable is, and then the start position and stop position uh, for this particular uh, string that we're looking for. So let's run this and see what this produces. Okay, so when I open this up, I now have my location here, and notice that it stripped off the last number. It only gave me the first two characters, which is exactly what I wanted to do. And you don't have to start at one. You can pick some off that are off the end if you want to. Um, and you can also use this uh, when you're dealing with these other ones because you can use this with BAS4, like for example, tells you that it starts at the third letter. So you could go through and try to find things. Uh, using the find and then extract it out using the substrate uh, function. Okay, so that gives us the ability to do this as well. The other thing we can do with this is subset by this. Suppose I want to, if in our case here, bass2 is greater than zero. Now this is a different way to subset. Before I mentioned there's a where statement, but here, if this number is greater than zero, what does that mean? that means that that word bass actually showed up in it. Okay, so if I run this, I should see only threes. And sure enough, only threes are here. It got rid of all the other fish other than the smallmouth and largemouth bass. Those are the only ones left in this data set. And I also have it grouped by location over here if I wanted to. Now, this is where this becomes uh, good for chaining ideas together is it allows us to not only look for something, but then subset on something. Because whenever you're dealing with text, text can be difficult and making lowercase and uppercase and things like that are really good ideas uh, when you're trying to do these things. And yes, you can chain these ideas together in like a composition of functions and I would actually highly recommend you do that. But it allows you to be able to search through substrings and then subset on them fairly easily. All right, so this gets us started working with these uh, text data sets. Now we can move on to the next video.